Hey everybody, this is Glider Cat, and it's time to play. Today we're going to start a new Let's Play season on a game called Colony Survival. I last featured this game on the Glider Cat channel about a year and a half ago. And this is a really, really big update. They've changed a bunch in the game. The enemies are different. Uh, how you do remote outposts is different. There's just colony points are different. So I'm super anxious to get into it. If you look at the bottom right, you can see I'm playing version 0.9.0.36. I did have a little bit of time to play this in kind of closed beta, but not nearly as much time as I want. So we're going to learn a lot as we go here. I'm going to stick with normal difficulty. There's the world seed if you want to take a look at that. Uh, and let's, we get it set to generate world and we're going to play solo. Let's jump in. All right. I read through these tutorials quickly. We may come back and revisit them as we play on and need help, but I'm going to scroll through these slowly. You can pause the video and read through them if you want, but there is a lot of helpful and updated information in here. There's just four or five of these screens here. One thing I thought that was of note here, it says build walls and dig moats in the monster free zone to protect the center of your colony. And it says, feel free to place jobs like farms in the monster zone, so the outside of your safe area, because colonists will leave this area and go to their beds when the night starts. So I've not done that before. I've always kept my farms and things in the safe zone. We may experiment with putting um, farms out in the kind of zombie zone, uh, and that actually may help us. We'll see if we do that or not. One more or two more screens here. <clears throat> All right, that's it for that. Like I said, we'll come back to that as we plan. Now we need to find a place for our starting base. And we've got a snowy mountain in the distance. I like that because I think there may be some unique resources there. I'm not positive. And we've got water nearby too. Those are both good things. I don't want to be right on top of the water though because as we dig... And we're going to dig underground quite a bit. I don't want to risk having our um, our place flood. So I'm going to come in from the water quite a bit. Maybe right here is not a bad spot. So let's go to the banner tool. I'll just click start new colony, create colony. And there we go. Here we are. Our colony. Uh, let me move off the banner tool. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to flatten out this area a bit to where this banner is. And I got to chip away a little bit here. And then we'll start building uh, walls and things. Now we don't have to worry about any enemies until we hire colonists. And I think we can hire quite a few colonists before we have to worry about enemies. But I'm going to take a couple minutes here and just flatten out a big broad area. And then we'll come back once I've got that done. I'll be right, well, I'm not going to be right back. It's going to take me some time, but I'll be right back for you. It'll just take a couple seconds. I'll see you in a second. All right, I finished doing a lot of terraforming here. So you can see we've got a nice, big, huge flat space all around our banner. So let's see, this looks kind of weird. What do we have over here? Oh, yeah, this is going to be the corner. So let's take a look at the um, at our safe zone. And then we're going to put up a wall so you can see where the shading is. This is the safe area. And this is not safe. If we get over to kind of a sunnier part, it looks like the sun might be starting to go down. You can see the safe zone is clearly here and the not so safe zone is over here. So we're going to put a wall. We're just going to use, uh, we're going to use grass to do this. And we're going to do it right at the safe zone. Let's see that again. So right here, oops, we don't want to put a banner down. Boom, boom. Let's double check that. Looks good. And we'll put a wall too high all the way around the perimeter here. 
And eventually we're going to tear this wall down. But this will get us started for quite a good, good long time and protect us against the enemies. And give us a lot of room to grow our little starter colony. I'll do one layer at a time and then eventually we're going to push out, uh, expand our safe zone. And then after one expansion or two, then we'll start thinking about like a permanent concrete wall and getting real serious about what we're doing here. Uh, let's see. I think that's the spot. Double check that. Yep, we're still in the safe zone here. Let's see, how much longer do we have to go? Uh, quite a ways. One more block. And we got to put a second level on this as well. Yeah, I've been looking forward to playing this for many, many months. And I am glad the release is finally here. Okay, we're going to close it all off. I need to leave an open spot. And let's do that. Just trying to take a look. Eventually, we're going to go grab water. Uh, let me... Turn my light on here with the G key. I think the water, we're going to end up going that way. So let's put our door right here and get the second layer. The enemies cannot hop over a two block high wall. I hope unless something's changed. Like I said, the enemies have changed quite a bit uh, for this version. I don't know a whole lot about it, but we're going to discover it as we go. Okay, boom, and then let's hop on the wall over here. It's a little easier doing one layer at a time, it seems like. Quite reach that spot. Oh. No, I'm out of, uh, out of grass. Let's get some more. Oh, you can see all the blocks that I've taken out. <laughs> so if you want to count these up, 3,600 dirt I've taken out. Here's 1,260 grass, another 1,200 grass, and then all this stuff here. So I was pretty busy here leveling this area off for us to get us started. It's like night's starting to set in here. We've got torches, too, we can put out. torch on the corner here. They give us 10 to start with and we can craft our own. Uh, that's our door. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'm going to put a torch here. Oops, that's not a torch. That's a torch. Let's put a torch at the entrance as well. That, and then let's hit the other corners. Okay, we've got a lot of room for our starter area. Last corner. All right, good to go. Again, we don't have to worry about any enemies for a while. Let's take a look at our kind of set of screens here. So in our stockpile, we already saw we got a bunch of building blocks that I've chipped away at. We've got some saplings as well. They start us off with 20 berry meals. Uh, stone, I think this is for me chewing away at the rock. We've got 12 beds, 3 crates, 20 torches available to us in inventory. So I could just drag those to my hotbar. 
And then we've got our science tab. So we've got some things we can research here. Let's do it. Miner unlocks the miner when placed on a dark stone block. A colonist will come to mine that material continuously. Requires stone rubble. Okay, let's complete that. Boom. Pottery unlocks pottery used to carry things around and earthenware that can be sold requires clay. Okay, so we don't have clay yet. And smelter, we need stone tools. And wheat farming, we also need stone tools. All right. Colony points. This has changed significantly since I last played. As soon as we get 100 colony points, we can expand the capacity of our colony. Currently, we are allowed to recruit up to 100. We don't have any yet. Health, I think this is our personal health for fall damage and things, or even getting attacked by the zombies if we're out in the wild ourselves. And then the banner safe zone. This is what I want to do. This says 30 blocks currently, and we'll get to 35 blocks with the next upgrade. And that's going to cost us 500 points. We go 14 levels. I'm thinking of waiting until we get at least one, maybe two upgrades before we build our true perimeter wall. So this one's just kind of temporary. Uh, let's go back and see what else we've got here. Colony. Okay, we're going to recruit here soon. Notifications. Okay, this is just like a log of what's been going on. Manage jobs, manage owners. Okay, now let's build a tinkerer's table. In fact, let's, uh, here we are at the center. Let's do a couple things. I know we're going to want to start burrowing down. And I also know that... This is where all of our zombie friends are going to be coming after the, the uh, banner. They'll go after our guards and they'll go after us if, they, if we're close by. But their main goal is getting to the banner here. And I think once they hit the banner, they kill off some colonists or something automatically. We'll see. I need to put a stairway to go down because we're going to be doing some mining. Just debating where to do that. Should I do it right next to the banner here? That's where I usually do it. Um... Let's, yeah, we can always close it up if we don't like it. So we'll get a stairway going down here. And this guy will go... I want to do this, just thinking it through. It's just going to go down. We're going to have floors that are about 10 levels deep each. Each floor will be 10 blocks high. Let's chew this down for a little bit. We gotta count them. I don't see any indication on the GUI of like what height we're at or anything. Maybe that comes later. We'll get some kind of indication. So let's count these up right now. We one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we gotta go one more. Right. Okay, yeah, we're 10 levels deep. Dig this out a little bit. One of the things I want to do before we get colonists and have any enemies to worry about is I want to get water into our base. Because we're going to need that for food. We're going to need that for other things. And I crafted or I carved out a little trench here. I think this goes where I want it to go. Let's just double check. But we need to burrow a little trench to get water into our base. And once it's in there, then we're good. We can route it any way we want. So 
here we are on the sand. Whoops. I'm going to chew this up a bit as we go. Make sure we're lined up. I think we are. Yeah, there's our trench in the distance. You can kind of see it. Oh, man, it's bright. Okay, there we go. So we'll chew our way through the sand till we hit the water, and then the water should come flowing in. Okay, inventory is full. New items may be discarded. Okay, that's because I'm far away from our colony, so I can no longer access our colony inventory. That's fine. I don't need the sand. Okay, here comes the water. And we want to bring this all the way back to home here. So let's chew through this. This should take us right to the center of our base, I believe. But I'm not sure what the depth will be. Our base, or our banner, is a little bit higher than this. Which is good, because we'll have the water come in like a, on the first floor below the surface. But our first floor goes down 10 blocks. This water may not quite be 10 blocks. We'll see. It's still coming. It's right behind us. It's on its way. And then if we want, once we route it, we can cover it up. We can block it off. As long as we have one block of water in our base, we can uh, propagate that as much as we want. More digging. Okay, it shows in the top left that we are within colony range there. It says Glider Cat's Colony. So all these dirt blocks are going into inventory. We'll make use of some of this. We're not going to make use of all this dirt, probably. But... And I'll probably cover up this trench once we've got this task achieved. But again, I want to do this before we have to worry about enemies, because right now I can kind of roam free. I can roam in this trench where I can't really get out, and I don't have to worry about enemies falling down in here and attacking me, where I have no route to escape. So I like to set this up very early. Okay, now we're getting close to the perimeter of our safe area. In fact, we're going to have to climb up here in a second and see just exactly where we're at. Because this water is going to join up somewhere underneath. Oops, do I need to? Yeah, let's make some stairs here. And again, we're safe. We've got time to do this. Okay, there we are. And there's our stairway going down, right? I still don't know what the depth is. So what we want to do, a couple things we want to do here. I want to temporarily shut off the water supply so it doesn't come any further because I don't want to risk flooding our, our, um, our first floor, our first subfloor, I should say. Because that is a bit hard to recover from once you flood. There's, uh, I think, some like a console command you can use to push back the water, but we'll see if we can avoid doing that. We know the water's going to come through here, right on the flag. So we need to go down and dig out on the first floor, um, two over to the left, right? So this way. I'm actually going to move over three to the left. So I can have a wall here for my stairway. 
I think I'll leave a wall between each side. We'll see. And then once we get a little bit further, we'll move over to the left from where we're facing now a block. You'll see once we get past where the stairs are going to be. In fact, this is really the only row I need right now. Chewing through the stone is a little slower. Eventually we're going to have diggers that'll do this for us. Or a good amount of it for us. I don't know if they'll do all of it for us all the time, but they'll do a lot of it. Now I'm going to move over one. I think we're past the stairs. And we're just going to push these two rows all the way through. Two columns, I guess. Alright, so now we're at the end of the safe zone here underground, so we'll patch this up soon as we get the enemies, but for now we just want to now bring that water in and see where it's going to end up. We've got it blocked off, so we're not going to flood this whole area, but we want to see where that trench is going to end up. So let's go back to that and start burrowing into our safe area. Down, down, down. Like I said, we'll leave that little quirk there. And we'll just remember that this bottom, the level that we're standing on, that's where the water is going to be flowing. There we go. We just broke through. Alright, so halfway up, looks like. Uh, let's see, we're... It's hard to count the blocks like this. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five blocks up. So this floor is going to go... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more, right? I think that is ten high. Okay. So let's see, we want to build some kind of stairs up to here. Again, this is going to be kind of temporary. Water we know is going to come in here and we can go up a little bit higher. And so what I'm setting up right here is I want to have a stream of water that we can actually get to, and that is kind of protected by blocks. It's not going to flow down to the slower level, but we need a way to get up to it, and we need to make sure it's all kind of fenced in. So, in theory... If we go up here, now this could be a little trench of water. Let's see where we are on the safe zone. Oh, we're still not in the safe zone. I'm going to actually cover that up. Basically, I just want to get a little pool of water into the safe zone. And then we'll cork everything off and shut it off. And once we've got water, we can expand it at our leisure and attach fishermen to it and water gatherers and all that kind of thing. But we first need to get it into the base. Okay, let's look at the safe zone here. So water can come through. Now we just need to make sure. I don't think it'll travel through the grass. 
And we need a way to get out of here. I think we'll be okay <laughs> like this. Let's uh close that off a little bit more. Check the safe zone again. Do one more. This will make sense in a minute if it doesn't already. We're gonna let the water come through and then we're gonna cork it off and we're gonna block off these unsafe areas so zombies don't spawn in here. And then once we've got the water in there, we can come back later and make use of the water. All right, let's uncork it. Hopefully I did everything I wanted to do. Boom. While it's on its way over here, I'll clear off a little bit more of this. There it goes. It's starting to fill up our little trench. And that's really all we needed to do. Now we have to close up. We want a way to get up there. So let's push this back a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. And now we can cork all of this off. Now no zombies can come through here. That little spot and we want to make sure that all this unsafe area is closed off as well so let's do that that's all of this don't want zombies spawning in here and making their way through our base when we're not expecting them. Okay, so we're all safe here, I believe. And now we've got a water supply we can tap into. We'll dig all this out. Maybe I can do some of that between episodes. But now our water situation is kind of taken care of. I'm gonna go back up and trench that, or fill that trench, the top layer of that trench, so that we don't fall into it. This is going to be kind of our ground level. So we may end up like filling this as we expand. We'll see. But for now, all I want to do is just cover this up. I don't care if enemies spawn in there. They can't get to us. Just don't want to fall into this hole when we're out here because we won't be able to escape. And if a zombie comes in there after us, we'll be in big trouble, especially if there's a whole horde of them. So fill this up just so we don't fall in. And we're also going to have to be, you know, we're going to have to be a little conscious of this. Tell you what, I'm going to fill up some of this water too. Because as we expand the first floor, we don't want to dip into this water and flood our base. Let me just make, yeah, okay. That's, I'm going to fill up all this water. I don't want to have it flood our base down the road. So we're just going to push the water back. Got plenty of resource to do this. Could use dirt. Probably should use dirt. Got less use for dirt, I think, than the grass. Long run, but we did it. All right, that's fine. It's probably good enough. Let's go all the way just to be thorough. Later on, I can use sand or something to make that look pretty. I do want to cover up this trench. I'm going to use dirt for this. Get 
But now we can go a little higher. I just don't want to fall into a place where I can't get out quickly. Grab more dirt out of inventory. We've got plenty. Go up a level. See our, the lights of our base in the distance. We're not too far. Okay, that's all filled. This is all filled. Done. Mission accomplished. Okay, now let's start building little stations here. We've got the start of our kind of subfloor area here, or <laughs> subterranean aspect, or portion of our base. This is all going to get dug out, and we're going to go pretty deep and set up miners and things. But let's see what we can build. We can get some people, get some colonists in our colony here. Let's do it, and let's build the tinkerer's table. We've got plenty of stone rubble and logs. Let's get that down. I think this is going to allow us to do the tools. So I'll slap that on the hop bar and plunk this down. Let's see. That'll do. And then let's get a crate on the hop bar. Got three of those, I think. Oh, we can't even make crates yet. All right. Boom. And then we'll go into the colony screen and recruit to fill all jobs. Oh, we got to put beds down. Yeah, I was thinking of building like a little set of bunk beds. Maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll do that a little later. We're going to just throw some on the ground here. Unceremoniously. Not going to look great, but we'll, uh, we'll move these soon. Here's our 10 beds. Now let's go back to the colony screen and recruit a worker to fill that job. Recruit to fill all jobs. Boom. We got our first colonist here. And they ate a berry meal right away. And let's see. Here is the work that's set up. The beds. is set to do five beds or maintain a supply of five beds and it's a medium priority. We've got crates, two. Let's kick that up to five. We got planks from a different kinds of wood set to a limit of a hundred. We've got slings. We only need, I don't know if our, if our um, guards need these or if it's just us. Let's kick that up to at least two. That's a high priority item. Sling bullets. Yep. We're going to use those for sure. Slinger guard. Let's always have a couple of these at least. Just setting the limits for what this guy's going to produce for us. Tools. We saw that these are required for some of the upgrades and unlocks we need. So I'm going to kick that up. And Tinker's table. We can kick these up to two or something or three. And minor job. Let's kick that up to five. And now let's see if we can get a farm going. We don't want to build a farm over this stone, I don't believe, but maybe over this way we could. Okay, berry farmer. And boy, it's been a while since I've done this. And I can't remember what the ideal is. Hmm. Odd numbers seem to strike me as being good. Let's... This might actually be a good size. And let's put a crate down. Let's start by putting a crate just out of the range. And recruit to fill all jobs. We'll get a berry farmer coming out here. We'll see how they plant, and that'll tell us a good spot to put the crate. Comes our berry farmer. Ideally, you'd put the beds right near there. Okay, hey, this guy's going about making us a sling. Let's take a look at our inventory. 
We've got 18 berry meals. Definitely going to put more farmers down. And we've got two stone tools. We're going to need that for unlocks here soon. All right, we need five stone tools. Requires beds for wheat farming. Hmm. I guess we need to make more beds. Or I can pull some of those up. Okay, let's see where our berry farmer's doing here. Um, is that a good layout or not? I'm not sure how big these berry farms should be. I think this is what I went with last time. As long as that guy stays busy, then we're in good shape. I'm going to put the box there, pull this up, and let's do another. If these aren't the most efficient, we can change as we play on. Whoops, we need to right click and then that's not what I want. Right click and another right click. And then that berry farmer can share that great. I'm gonna do a few more of these. And then we'll put another crate down there. And then let's recruit and get the people in to do the farming. Boom. So we've got five spare beds left. Look at the stockpile. We've got zero beds being made. We're probably going to need another tinkerer's table and another person doing this kind of stuff. Oops. Does this guy make beds? Yeah, he does. Let's put down another tinker's table if I have it. Do I have one? Oh, I can handcraft this. Good. Oh, we've got two beds. What does the science unlock want? For wheat farming, we need five beds. And we need more stone tools. Let's get another tinkerer down. I think it's pretty safe to say we're going to need that. And they can actually share that crate. Recruit to fill all jobs. First thing they do is come and eat. Okay, we've got four berry farmers. Now, if we see these guys idle, where they don't have a progress bar above them, then I think that tells us that the farm plot here is too small, but if they stay busy all the time and we don't see them idle, then this is probably just fine. And if we go too big, we're kind of wasting space. If we go too small, then we're kind of wasting the workers. You know what I mean? Okay. So these four are doing their thing. How are we doing? We're getting berries and they should produce berry meals as well. Let's look at the managed jobs. Okay, berry farmers, tinkerers. That looks good. Just checking all the different settings here to make sure I'm not missing something. There is a place to set the limits. That's what I'm looking for as far as like how many berry meals to, to make. I don't know if we just click on this or one of these guys or where could this be? There. Tinkerer. Select limits group. I see. So for different groups of workers, you can put them in a group, I guess, and then set diff different limits here, production limits for different sets of workers. I don't think we're going to do that anytime soon. Right now I'm looking to see where the amount of berry meals is set. Might be something I actually have to unlock to get to. Thought it was kind of in here in the manage jobs, but we looked there. Manage owners. That's nothing. We need to worry about. Let me see again. Nothing we need to worry about now. The 
manage jabs one more time. Can I right click on this guy or do anything? No, I can only set the limit. We'll find it. It's going to come up later. Okay, the other thing we could do is plant, is have a forester that's going to produce wood for us. Let's do that too. Okay, these guys are all heading off to bed. Let's do the trees off this way. I'm going to chew up this block. And you can see in the top right, it says total meals 21. Ammo, we've got 90 of, I think it's the basic ammo. And we have no colony points, and our threat level is zero, which means probably no zombies to worry about just yet. So let's get Forester down. Now this one is a little different. Can't remember what the perfect size is. I'm going to go 10 by 10. And then we'll see what we get. And I'll pop a crate down if I've got one. I don't. Can I make them? I cannot. I'm going to have to go borrow a crate from one of these guys. Oh man, there's only two. Let's go over here. Right click on that. Crates. Can we increase the priority of this temporarily? to super duper high. There's our little guys sleeping. They sleep with their eyes open. I think it'd be kind of cool if they had like little closed eyes. They don't. They're always on watch. All right. I really need a crate. So let's grab one. And then we'll get more later. Anywhere over here is fine for now. And then let's recruit that person. They're going to go straight to sleep probably, but okay. So we've got three beds and I've got two on my own inventory. So I think I've got two free that we could place. Three spare beds placed. I've got two in my inventory we could place. We're able to recruit 93 more colonists. And right now we've got seven colonists. And we're just waiting for these guys to wake up. Wake up and get to work while they're not doing anything. We know we need to do some digging. Because eventually we're going to unlock the miners. Let's get to it. And I guess we can dig near the um, near that water area. We're actually going to have to go deeper than this, it looks like, to get to the mining stone. We do a little bit here and then a little bit deeper. We'll extend the stairway too. And eventually we'll have diggers that'll do this for us. And we will not have to do it slow and manual like this. At least not too much. We're always going to have to do some digging but we won't have to go spend hours on it. All right, let's go deeper. And I think we're going to have our stairway actually go this direction. This is the wall I was talking about, having a wall between the, the stairs. We may not need it, but... We'll start out with that design. Okay, now we're coming into the darker stone, and there's some ore right there. But for the stairway, we're going to ignore the ore or just cut right through it and keep moving. This one, which I'm a little bit colorblind, quite a bit colorblind, actually. I can see some colors, but I can't distinguish some from others. So let's see what this is. Uh, I'm going to check my inventory first. This, I think, is... Well, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to guess. It's... Where are you? Okay. Copper. Okay, that red is copper. This one's either clay or iron. We'll see. I don't want to chip that spot away because it's our stairs. And I don't have any blocks yet where I can actually fill. And only fill with, like, grass or dirt. 
That's another copper. Okay, let's see what this guy is. Copper. Okay, clay. And we need that for one of the science upgrades, right? This one. We need 10 clay, so we've got one. As we mine these, if you're not familiar with the game, if you chew up the chunk like this, like I'm doing, you only get one ore. But if we place a miner on top of this guy, we'll get infinite ore, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it depletes. Didn't used to. Now, like I said, there's been a lot of changes with the game since I last played. I think we get infinite. Right now, we got to chew through it. I'm not too worried about it. It's slow to mine this by hand, the dark rock for sure. And the ore is even slower than that. Oh. If you mouse off of it, then you lose your progress. You want to go down 10 for the next floor. Pick up some clay here along the way. And that will allow us to unlock the pottery. All right, how we doing? Did I go too far down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are we right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we're perfect. We're going to head up to the surface in a minute here. Just dig this out. With any luck, we'll find some more clay that we can chew through. That's in our normal kind of mining area that we want to clear out anyway. There's a couple nuggets, more copper there. Take these guys, we need it. How are we doing on clay? 10. Perfect. Let's head up. Let's head up from the mining. Like I said, I'll do some of this uh, off camera because it's not too fun to watch. Up we go. Daylight. And let's take a look at our forester. See how they're doing. Pretty good. Nine trees, looks like. Planted. Let's see what the zone is. You know what? I think we need the full 10 by 10 when we place these. The crate could be pushed in. Um, it's probably not in a bad spot. Let's see here, just out of curiosity. Uh, that we could go a little bit smaller with the tree farm. It looks like we've got two blocks between the trees. I have a feeling. We need two blocks between the trees. Uh, no, maybe 10 by 10 is the way it has to be. We'll see. When we place the next one, we'll go a little smaller. Maybe 9 by 9 and see if that works. But he's planting trees. We've got two people working on our task list here. We should be getting beds and crates. Let's see how the inventory looks. Okay, they've been making crates. We've got seven now. How about beds? Two. That's not a lot. We need more beds. We've got a minor job. All right. Cool. Let's take the miner and put it on the hotbar and let's take the crates. And let's do that. Let's get a miner if we can on the clay. In fact, we may put a couple beds down here. 
Now that one's perfect because it's right on the floor. That's kind of for the aesthetic. That's what we want. So I'm going to chew this back a little bit more. It'd be nice if we could find a clay deposit at that same level. No such luck. At least not yet. I'll do some digging between episodes. We're just about wrapping this episode up. Let's put down a miner, though. Uh, do I have it? Where would you be? Do we not have that unlocked? Oh, 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 I can just place it as a job. It's a little different now. Um, let's see. Okay, there's the mining job. I'm not sure where I put the crate. I'm going to shove a bed down here just so that he doesn't have to walk so far. Still going to have to walk to get food. So I believe once a day, every colonist is going to make a trip to that flag to get their meal for the day, their berry meal, until we actually get a grocer. And then we can place grocers near the work sites and they'll only have to walk to that. But at least that worker's bed will be close. Let's recruit him and get him all in here. There's our miner. Down here she goes. I still have to place the crate. That's going to be important. We don't want them walking up to the surface to play to uh, mine. I guess anywhere. He stands right on it. You can see he's mining the copper. It's slow. We'll put a crate down from him. He's got his bed and a very, very lonely life so far. But let's, uh, let's just, let's see if we can find a clay deposit real quick. Just going to chew away a few blocks. That's another copper. We don't need more copper miners yet. Oh, I sure would be nice to find clay. I'll do it between episodes if we don't find one real soon here. Looks like I'm not going to get lucky. We'll do one more little row. See what we get. Nothing. All right. Well, we've got copper being mined. And our miner back basically went up to the surface to get food, I believe. Because his bed's right nearby. I think. Did he go to bed up here? Hey, is that our miner? Kind of looks like our miner. Why don't you like the bed down here? Oh, maybe he came up for food and then the sun went down and this bed was closest to when he, uh, when it was time to go to bed. Anyway, that's it for this episode. We are off to a pretty good kick and start here. We terraformed the land. We've got a nice, huge perimeter here. We've got no threat rating yet in the top right. So no worries about zombies or having to place guards just yet. We've got our first tree farm going with a couple of big trees here. In fact, they may have even harvested some. We've got three berry farms going. And let's take a look at the inventory. We got 27 berry meals. We started with 20. So that's gone up. We fed our people, our villagers, and we've got 14 extra berries. We set down two tinker tables. We've got people working on that, building beds and workstations and things for us. So yeah, we're off to a good, good start. While our colonists sleep under the stars on a full moon, pretty cool looking. We'll wrap it here for analysis. Glider cat saying, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy the series on colony survival. I'm very, very excited about this game. Like I said, I've been wanting to play for a long time and I've put some thought into where we're going and how our castle is eventually going to look. It's going to take a while to get there. But man, I'm excited for what I got planned here. I think it's going to be pretty cool. With that, uh, I'll let you go and say thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.